I like tall speakers. I like small speakers. Let's cut to the chase. I was on the ProtoVision site a few weeks ago and I saw this for sale. It's an FM radio for the Commodore 64. Who could resist 25 euros? I thought I'm having some of that. And uh, two important notes here. One, I've recorded this video once and it wasn't on the phone when I came back to it. So I'm doing it again. Second, yes, I do have paint on my hands. And depending on if you've seen the multi-face video before or after this, yes, I'm, I'm recording these videos at the same time, quickly on my camera phone as well. So uh, that's why the video quality and sound quality is rubbish. But what do we get in our box for our £25? So we've got a special offer, and now includes Geo App and Driver, FM radio module and software. Uh, produced and marketed by Shareware Plus. I bought this in ProtoVision. There's a C128K version as well. So uh, let's open this up. And I can pretend to be act surprised, because unfortunately the surprise is gone here, because there is something quite surprising in here. And here we go, let's start with it. Look! You get your drivers on a floppy disk. Now, yeah, this did actually was. <laughs> it's funny, it's brilliant, but it did reduce me to hysterics the first time I opened this up on the video that I no longer have, because it was like, what am I doing with this? In special 2022, so surely only the hardcore Commodore users have a floppy drive, I and mean, the rest of us have kind of moved on. But no, I think it's brilliant. I love the fact. It's on a, in a Commodore disc thing, if that's original or someone's printed those. I don't know. I absolutely love it and kudos for doing it, but it did make me laugh. Um, you get a flyer for ProtoVision, state-of-the-art C64 games since 1996. Um, played any of those on the channel? don't think so. Uh, gold cartridge edition of one of our games available only to our supporters. Uh, you get some instructions. FM radio and IDE64 CD player. So if you've got the IDE64, you can use your Commodore 64 to play CDs. Um, I'm sure it's a pretty cool thing to have. Um, yeah. And then we got some, oh, you require an extra. Okay, yeah, got to have the CD drive, obviously. So, uh, Controls for the software, you, you switch radio on and off, stereo, mono, bass boost, uh, turn your de-emphasis on and off, scanning up and down, uh, channel store. I wonder if you get RDS with this, probably not for 25 quid. Um, you get nine presets. Wow. Um, okay. And let's look at the device again. Bag. Over there, and this is what you get. You get oh, wires, wires, wires. This goes into the user port. This side up, very important. Why that's not all potted at the back, I don't know. But there you go. That's uh, there. That goes out this little board. Basically, it's I/O, isn't it? Coming out of there to control the board and power. And then it goes into this little board here that has a tiny little daughter FM receiver daughter board on there. If you can see that, can I get the camera to focus on that? I can. If you just you can see all the paint on my fingers. Um, yeah, you've got three and a half, three point three volts coming up the C64 ground, and then SDA and SCL, whatever they are. They're going to be the control signals. Capacitor there, resistor. Some surface mount stuff and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, one assumes, and an antenna. Let me just get that back down there, focus on there, which is currently all looped up here, which is not a good idea for FM. Loop antennas are good for AM, but I suggest if you're going to get use this, you unclip this and just run it out a little bit because it's going to do absolutely nothing. All uh, all called up that like that unless you live next door to the transmitter. I bet I'll probably get the BBC Nationals on this when I come to try it. 
um, any other high power stuff, but we will see. We will plug it in and see what it works like in default state, and then we'll run the aerial out um, and see how it all works. But yeah, let's uh, plug this into the C64 and give this a go. So to plug this into my C64, I'm going to use my user port saver from the Futures 8 bit because the connector is quite hard to get out once you've plugged it in. So if you've got it on a user port saver, then it's just easier. So boot up my 64. So it's looking for my card. It's found the chip. And we press space to continue to the FM radio. And here we are. And well, currently it looks very unexciting because we need to tune it to a station. Try and find something. Should be coming up to hopefully radio two. There we go. The only bit that was left was that was that little bit. You know, the tiny little. You can create a preset. There's no RDS. You can type in the station name and save it. Celebrating someone. I thought, oh, that's fine. That's fine. No, 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 no. I thought, I thought a bit. Bet a couple of them are R&B ladies, you know, they're going to know, oh, no, they're going to, oh, they stay out there, stay. And to improve the signal, I have cut the cable tie. So here's the device plugged into the back of my C64. And I've cut the cable, Is it cable tie. It's more expensive. And getting a much better signal now. I think the thing is, though, it was, it got expensive anyway. I think a lot of places. Not getting any um, indication of the signal strength, which should be under the RSSI. Have your dog with you. Don't know why, but it sounds fine. Getting a stereo oh, signal. Very expensive. The place we stayed in, which is where. So you need to put it down there next to the computer. No, there's no uh, I, I signal suddenly deteriorates. So, like any place. FM aerial, Hollywood it needs to be extended. I don't know why it's coiled up. My, my presumably for transport. Lives there. Is one of the A-lister. A-lister is trying to buy. Uh, action films. Um... <laughs> That's narrowed it right down. Well, okay, action uh, films. And while these two imbeciles babble away I'm like <laughs> goodness knows <laughs> what, I'm just going to detune the radio and tune it back in again just see if I can get that signal strength. There we go. That's working now. Seems to be a bug with the software. Sometimes you don't seem to get the signal strength indicator working. But if you detune and go back into the station again, suddenly it's there. Sensitivity on the radio isn't great. I can tell you that. You'll get the strong stations. Do not expect to get weaker stations or community radio stations running at 10 or 15 watts. See, I can't even get Radio Solent on 96.1 here very well. Which is, you know, I'm fiddling with the aerial. It's not very good though, is it? Although I'm going to have to cut that because you can't... Clearly, I can't have the audio music they're playing. But trust me, it's very wispy and poor signal. The problem is, of course, these computers kick out so much RF anyway that having an FM receiver attached to them is probably not the best idea. Uh, this is uh, some abominable noise, like a fax machine being attacked, which I assume is Radio 1, and I can't play you the audio. When they start to speak, I will. Maxim as well. Love you guys. This is Rene Levice. All right, check it out. We are at the top of the hour. So again, signal's which not fantastic. Which means we've got about half an hour more of bangers until we get into the DMV. And yet my signal strength meter is jammed up the top, and I'm struggling to stereo. Onto the next turntable. It you see the stereo indicator flashing on and off. This is KX5 with something really enjoying called Escape featuring Halo. This is the Tall Order boot. Uh, let's see if we can get a local independent station that has a very powerful transmitter. Wave 105. Profit. Ukraine's military chief the says Russia's invasion has killed 9,000 of their soldiers in the conflict so far. Meanwhile, not Ukraine's great. denied claims by Russia that a spy killed the daughter of a key ally of Vladimir Putin. Daria Dugan's It's really cool to be have this on your C64, but the is the signal is just not. More British Airways flights are said it, to be cancelled. There's kind of a lot of novelty value here until the end of October, without any actual much practical use. And let's just compare this with a, a cheap handheld Sony analog radio. How much stuff I can pick up. Radio 3. Radio 4. Radio Solent. Radio 1. 
Wave 105 with the jingle and plenty of other stations as well. And that's just a really cheap Sony handheld radio I bought off eBay secondhand that picks up everything I'd want to and get it away from the computer and it will pick up even more. So what do I think of this FM radio for the C64? Well, on the one hand, I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's so cool to have this on your C64 and be able to pick up radio stations and just do this. I think the novelty value for 25 by euros is amazing. And yes, it is limited. You're not going to pick up everything. You're going to need to unclip that aerial and run it as far away from the computer as possible. But even so, if you're only just picking up a few stations on it, the novelty value is immense. Practical use? Well, <laughs> there's, there's none really. You're not going to listen to the radio through your Commodore 64 unless you're some kind of utter and complete lunatic. But that's not the point of this device, I expect. The point of this device is to have something cool you can plug into your C64 and go, hey, I've got an FM radio on my C64. And for the novelty value alone, I can highly recommend getting hold of one of these. <laughs> 